Up to this point, we discussed what the radioactive alpha decay is, and we also examined what the alpha particle actually consists of. Now, what we haven't discussed is why specifically an alpha particle is released. So, why should the nucleus of some unstable atom release this combination of two protons and two neutrons that are held together in the bundle that we call the alpha particle that, re that resembles the helium atom? So, why doesn't, for example, the unstable nucleus simply release four individual nucleons. So to answer this question, let's look at the following example. So, determine how much lower in energy the alpha particle bundle is than its constituent four nucleons. So, let's examine the following reaction. So, basically, in this reaction, we have the reactants, we have the four individual nucleons that are not held together in a bundle, that are not held together by strong and weak nuclear forces. Now, we basically combine all these four nucleons into this bundle we call the alpha particle and we want to examine if and how much energy is released. Now if energy is actually released in the process that means this bundle we call the alpha particle is in fact more stable than the combination of the energies of these four individual nucleons. So basically, we're going to take the approach of calculating the mass of the reactants and comparing that mass to the mass of our product. Now, if we examine some table that can give us the mass of our alpha particle, we'll see that the mass of an alpha particle is given by 4.001506 unified atomic mass units. Now, the mass of a single uh, new neutron is 1.008665U and the mass of a single proton is 1.007276U. So basically, we multiply each by two and we take the sum and we get that the mass of four individual nucleons is 4.031882U. So notice that the mass of the reactants is greater than the mass of the products. So now we can calculate what the change in mass is. What is the decrease in mass when this reaction takes place? When we combine the four nucleons to form our bundle, we call the alpha particle. So we simply subtract and we get 0.03376 unified atomic mass units. So this is our change, our decrease in energy. And the question is, where does this mass actually go? Where the mass goes into transforming into energy. And to calculate how much energy this change in mass corresponds to, we use the rest mass energy. So change in E is equal to change in M multiplied by C squared where the C is basically the speed with which this electromagnetic radiation travels. It's the speed of light in a vacuum. So we plug in this quantity into delta M, but we have to multiply by the conversion factor. We have to convert from unified atomic mass units to kilograms by multiplying by this quantity. And we multiply that by the square of the speed of light in a vacuum, and we get about 4.5 54 times 10 to negative 19 joules and that is equivalent to about 28.4 mega electron volts. So what this basically tells us is that this bundle called the alpha particle is actually more stable and lower in energy by this amount if compared to the individual four nucleons that are not bonded together by strong nuclear forces. So we see this is in fact a very favorable reaction. 
Now, let's move on to this example. So now that we know that this is in fact a favorable reaction, let's examine why our unstable atom doesn't actually dissociate, doesn't actually release our four nucleons individually. So, suppose uranium-232 underwent an alpha decay or a decay in which it transformed into thorium-228 by releasing two protons and two neutrons individually. So now, we're assuming the alpha decay doesn't take place. We have a radioactive decay in which our uranium simply releases one proton, one proton, one neutron, one neutron, and forms our thorium atom. And we want to ask ourselves, is energy actually released? And if so, how much energy? So once again, we're going to take the same exact approach. Let's calculate the mass of the reactants and the mass of the products. Now, the mass of our uranium is given by this quantity, the mass of the thorium is given by this, and the mass of these individual four nucleons is given by this quantity. So, if we take the sum of this, we get this. And notice that 232.060623 is greater than 232.037156. And that basically means that the mass of the reactants is less than the mass of our product. And because of the energy mass equivalence, we see that the products together are less less stable and higher in energy than our reactants. And so that means energy is not released. In fact, energy must be absorbed by the uranium to actually form this quantity. And so that means this violates the conservation of energy and such a reaction will not actually take place. So once again, the total mass of the thorium plus the four individual nuclei is greater than the mass of our parent uranium atom. Now, this type of decay does not readily take place and cannot readily take place because not only does it produce an unstable bunch of nucleons, but it also violates the conservation of energy. So we have less energy in the beginning than at the end. So we have no energy released at the end. So, what exactly can we conclude about our discussion? Why exactly is the alpha particle actually released instead of these four individual nucleons? So, an alpha particle is extremely stable as a result of the strong nuclear forces that hold our four nucleons together. And these strong nuclear forces basically uh, make these four nucleons bundle up up in this concentrated region that resembles the helium atom and in the process it releases energy and so it's more stable. Therefore, when an unstable nucleus releases an alpha particle, it produces a lower in energy and a more stable system that does not violate the conservation of energy. And that's exactly why our alpha particle is released and set instead of the four individual nucleons being the two protons and two neutrons.